from what I recall, you were living with a single mom. Yep. She had three kids from three different daddies. She was banging all of the daddies. Not and me. Except, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm assuming that you had some some time with her. Otherwise, you would have sure. left sooner, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so she's basically banging four guys at the same time. And you're essentially the beta bucks part of the equation. You weren't making a lot of money. Can you kind of fill in the blanks there and just let people know what well, the starting point was and what actually, brought you to all this? I was actually making around 100000 at the time, but I saw myself as a 2 out of 10, right? Okay. So I, I weighed 115 pounds, and she was the hottest girl I've ever met, right? So it was like, oh, my God. 115 pounds? Yeah, dude. I was really that's skinny. That's light, like, dude. Like, how tall dude, are you? I'm 5'9". 5'9", 115. Yeah, that's that's really light. Yeah, super dude, light. I like malnourished, right? And so I didn't eat. Now I'm up to 165 after watching the show and and doing the work. But anyway, so I saw myself very low. She what are you at really, now? Like, what did you level up to as far as your you know physical appearance? I'm at 162 in weight. And Good game. I mean, okay. it's just like I, I don't know if you can see my, but it's just all muscle. Like I'm getting there. The shoulders are coming in. The back's coming in. Mm -hmm. Um, I did. How did you lap. end up with a single mom with three kids from three different daddies? I found her on Facebook and she invited me over and she was like, I mean, she looked so good. Right. And mm -hmm. it was like, I didn't get laid for a year before that. And if it was, it was like ones and twos, but she really ruined my life to the point of suicide, Rich. Like, um, I, I, I fell in love with her because I figured that was the best I could get at the time. And I, I didn't, I didn't have a father growing up. Mm -hmm. I've done like 10 years of therapy to get over that shit. And what happened to your old man when you were growing up? Did he, did he leave? Was your no, mom pushing him out kicked, of the way or what happened? He kicked me out of the house at, at 14 with my dog. So we, we went we went like homeless till I was 18. Okay, so you had a father until 14, but why did he throw yeah. you out of the house? Uh, he just wanted something different, I guess. And he was on uh, prescription pain pills and got addicted. And uh, it, it just a very bad environment. His father did the same thing to him, so maybe it runs in the family. I don't mm -hmm. know, but... But other than that, man, uh, I fell in love with this girl to the point where it was like I couldn't let go once I found out that she cheated on me a lot. Like these guys reached out to me, did me a favor, and I still called her and begged her to take me back. Like I, it was pathetic, dude. So all three of these guys reached out. You said, "Hey, John, well, just heads two up." Two of them did. <laughs> two, two of them, them did. Yeah. They yeah, just, yeah. you know, heads up. She's she's coming over every once and in a while. One of them is my one of my good friends now. So okay, <laughs> and, and he's crushing it in life too. But yeah. Okay. But they, they were alphas, you know, that they had, she had kids with. These were big, strong men that compete. So how old was she? 25. And how old were you at the time? Uh, 29. She managed to rack up three kids from three different guys by the time she was 25. Yeah, dude. The oldest was like 11. So she Did got, you have it. What? Oldest was like 11. Yeah. Like when she was like 16, she had a kid or something crazy. No, 25, 11. You're talking 14, dude. Not well, 14. She had a rough life. <laughs> okay. So like, were there any like red flags going off? Any bells yeah, of or course. any like little voice that said, yo, dude, dude are you dude. sure you want to do this? Dude, my whole stomach. And that's how I found your fucking video. Sorry, YouTube freaking videos is, um, is, uh, I was Googling, should I date a single mom? And I found all this content saying, John don't, because dude, I knew in my stomach first off one to one, I with, if she didn't have kids, I didn't qualify for her. Like if you just took the kids out of the equation, she was, she was nine out of 10 without kids. Right. I didn't qualify. So in my stomach, I knew something was wrong. Mm -hmm. So I started doing research about single moms. And the problem is that I found your videos and rejected the advice. Okay. I, I said, why no, did they, you reject the advice when you first came across it? Because I was so desperate to have companionship from her. Was there something uh, in the advice that offended you or, or you just think no, that I was no, wrong no, it's just, or? I just needed to be proven wrong, you know? Okay. And I think a lot of men that watch So you went family, looking for answers. You found answers. You didn't like the answers. Did you go looking yeah. for other answers somewhere else? Or did you just kind of like compartmentalize those? Compartmentalized. And then uh, after our breakup, I just started listening to you exclusively. Like I deleted Apple Music and just listened to Richard Cooper. And it's changed my life. So where was it like, like what was the aha moment that, that like said, that like forced you to say to yourself, okay, like, John, this is stupid. You know, this needs to stop. With the single mom or with my life in general? Yeah, starting starting with ending that relationship. Well, it was when she, she, so I told her I was done after, like, I figured out she was banging those guys. And then 
she called the police on me saying that I broke all the windows in her house. And I was in Arizona at the time. She was in Utah. So mm -hmm. I had a sheriff meet me in Arizona to prove that that was wrong. So I was supplying, you know, funds to this woman. You know, I made a hundred thousand a year. I saw myself as a low value guy. That's fine. But she went like bat sh shiz crazy uh, on me. And then, then she said I was harassing her. I went to like, I was a stalker. Then I broke all the windows in her house. And I just immediately like left state. I, I just to just, right. just, just to move away for a while. So aside from the other guys reaching out to you and say, hey, you know, she's, you know, she's coming over. Um, did they alert you to any other red flags with her that you previously just ignored? Yeah, domestic violence. Like two of them had domestic violence cases against False them. or real? Uh, false to their perspective, real to hers. Okay. So, so false. Yeah, so that's aligned <laughs> with her like walking around the house and smashing her own windows on and trying to blame you for it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's like one of the things that I'm always trying to tell guys is like, you know, like like there's all these little alert signals, there's these red flags, whatever it is that you want to call them that 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 will pop up and you can either pay attention to them and respect them and then walk away from problems or you can just cast them aside and say, ah, I don't know, that false domestic violence, that guy was probably an idiot sort of thing until it happens to you, right? And then you get a phone call from the police department saying, hey, you know, did you break this lady's windows and you have to go and meet with a sheriff to go and prove that you're in a different state. <laughs> so, okay, so you're, so you're skinny, r relatively well off for your age, yeah. definitely the wrong relationship. Did you yeah. just leave a Dear John letter and pack your bags and leave overnight? Like, Yeah, no, I just started driving that day and listening to your podcast, like, and it, it became a habit. Like, I, I cried. I, I was, like, still beta crying. I was weak for about three weeks. I had good support in Arizona, good friends to, like, yeah. that were more red-pilled that were like, dude, John, you don't ever do this again. Like, that single mom, three kids, you know how expensive that is? You yeah. make money. You don't make that much money. So, um, how yeah, long, no, I, how long were you with her for, by the way? Seven months. You could have been on the hook if you were with her for longer to, to pay child in support Utah, to those three kids yes. in Utah. Yeah. Cause yeah. she even said that we were married. Like she had this fake engagement ring she would wear. Yeah. Yeah. No. All right. So, okay. So you bounce and then, and then you walk away from that crap relationship and then you change a lot of aspects of your life cause you change your physical appearance yep. and you also change your ability to make it rain, you know, to make some bank. So what did you do there? Oh, testosterone. Uh, so the reason why I was so skinny, so apparently when I was 14, I was put on testosterone, taken off early, so it screwed up my hormones. My body naturally just wouldn't produce any testosterone. My levels were like low 100s or something, mm -hmm. like almost to the point where it's like I was a woman. So I got on testosterone three or four months later, I started, but I was also going to the gym at this time, but gaining no weight. There was something wrong. And the moment that TRT started working, like, People started, I didn't notice it, but people said the way that I'm treating them is more dominant and like mature. And I, I just started progressing in my business. My, I've been running this business for four years and it wasn't until like two months ago, we just landed our biggest contract. So did you ever, did you ever see the uh, Huberman interview? Um, I think it was with Friedman. He was talking about how uh, like the entire purpose of testosterone is to make effort feel good. Oh, yeah. And I tell my friends that, unfortunately, my best friend who was on TRT, he just passed away. But um, like I told him that it makes effort fun. And I get up at 5 a.m. to go running with the neighbors. Mm -hmm. I live in a like, OK, so I bought a house, right? A really nice house in St. George, Utah, super conservative out here. And my neighbors, we they're old. I, I mean, there's no one my age with a house where I live and we go running in the morning. My network is up. I'm, And it's just like the effort of waking up is more fun. I used to just sleep in all day right. and then go run to single mommy, right? For companionship. Oh, please take me back. I love you. Like, is it just why did they, um, why did they put you on testosterone therapy when you were a teenager? Uh, cause I wasn't growing. I was uh, five foot two through high school. I just wasn't growing. Really? I'm five foot nine now. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I just, my, I, I and I was also smoking cigarettes by like 12. Like my parents were real winners, you know? <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, it was, uh, I was malnourished growing up, no protein. And then they put me on testosterone to make me hit puberty was the reason. Okay. And, and then that kick started I, that and they pulled you off that. I yeah. Think. And then, okay. then it made my whole body never get used to supplying testosterone. So once I got put on it, it was like a you know, frying pan hitting you in the face, as you said, like everything seems different. Colors are brighter. I work harder. I go to the gym. I, Close Did they ever try it. HCG as a therapy to restart your own 
endocrine system or do they just go no but i i get i get hcg shots with my testosterone shots right but i mean like when you were a teenager they didn't try that to re- okay I, I don't i don't think so i don't remember much okay all right so so you've moved out you left that behind there's no ties there's no legal issues there's no he played the role of daddy you got to pay support here it was only a short period of time for seven months you got in you got out you learned your lesson what did you do to change your ability to earn income uh, I, okay, this is going to sound crazy, but I believe our subconscious can change the way we think. And if you're listening to hip hop music, F women get money all day, that's like four high value people that can do that, but it does nothing for you. So when I'm in the gym, I'm listening to business books, audiobooks, your podcast. Um, when I'm driving, I do a lot of driving. When I'm bored, I'll just drive 12 hours to Arizona mm-hmm. to go see friends. And I just fill my subconscious with good content. And it's really changed the way I output deals, structure deals, my motivation. So I don't even have Apple Music anymore. I just listen to Yeah, I've said that for a long time that um, you should turn your car into a learning center. Yeah, yeah. Call it a university or whatever. I got that from you because you can get like a master's degree in anything you want. Yeah, I got that from you. Honestly, (laughs) you'll learn a lot more listening to good books or podcasts in your car than what you will sitting in the classroom jotting down notes. Um, yeah, for sure. Especially the most successful people in the world will share their wealth on audiobook, podcasts. And when I say wealth, like I'm talking about knowledge, right? Yeah, um, and wouldn't you rather have like, you know, J.C. Maxwell talking to you in the ear versus, you know, F women get money, pop, like yeah. hip hop music? I mean, it just, or Elon Musk podcast. I mean, come on. Yeah, that'll, that'll, I mean, like the whole F women get money is okay. Maybe you might need to shift your mindset. Like don't get distracted, go find your purpose. But right. what are you doing now that you've, you know, figured that out? So, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, you turn your, your car into a learning center. Yes. Um, a lot of what else did you do that. aside from, from getting on testosterone therapy to, to get your endocrine system working. I mean, you change your diet. Like, did anything else yeah. go? Because you put on quite a bit of weight. I mean, you went for 115 pounds to 100, what, 65, you said? Yep, in about a year. In one year. Yeah, I just tagged you on that post from that starting point. And, yeah. Um, Is it okay if I show it to people? Yeah, please. Please do. Yeah. Let's see if I can pull it up. Um, and I, I'm bigger than, than that photo. That photo was last month. I added another six pounds this month, so... Oh, I got a damn. But it was diet, man. It was all diet. Do you mean to fold up online? Instagram sending me a security code. I have to punch in. Should I just Six. display it online? No, hold on a sec. I got to put it on my all desktop. Right. I'll do it. <clears throat> Come on. Yeah, save info. There we go. So I saw this post here. There was a before and after. There it is. Yeah, you were skinny as fuck. Hold on Oops. a second. What's that? There you go. So this is the before and after, right? Eh? <laughs> yeah. That is, that is yeah, a lot. Uh, that yeah. is a lot. Dude, so I spent 30 hours a week in the gym. Yeah. Yeah, That's, and I ate a lot. <laughs> so, I mean, like, let me ask you this question, because, I mean, one of the things that I find interesting is I, you know, I, I say, well, Here's some interesting information. Like I'll I'll take a map and I'll plot some landmines out, like single mommies, you know, crazy women, yeah. borderline personality disorder, you know, yep. doing stupid things that don't serve you. And I kind of plot them all out, and people go, "Oh, that's 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 not worth it. It's too much work." And they kind of go down this like doom and gloom sort of black pill sort of part of the Everyone internet. Everyone does. I get it. Yeah. Did you ever go to a place where it was like it's hopeless? No, no, not when I found you. It was hopeless when I was dating her. And when I broke up with her, but once I found your podcast, I didn't grow up with a dad, right? So it's like I got coached by the world's best father. This is going to sound really weird, and I don't mean to say it like that, but it's like I was getting coached by like the world's best father all the time, and it, it came down to business, finance, and women, and it worked. I mean, I, I think I can't recall one thing that I've followed to the T that hasn't worked that you've said, so... And it, I mean, my bank account reflects it. You know, my personal houses, I just acquired a gym. So I, mm-hmm. I'm a gym owner now. So I mean, like there's, you can't make this stuff up. And so there, there is not one piece of content that did not work for me that you've yeah. told men to do. I just think men have to hit their breaking point 
do the doom and gloom and then it's their choice right it's like it's not easy this was hard do you know how hard it is to work out for 30 hours a week i mean it's and eat that much it's brutal man but yeah well that's, that's, well, that's what i work. want to talk about a little bit too because i mean you're very skinny you know to start out with you're in a real bad relationship your head's on you know it's basically screwed on backwards right. um you weren't making huge bucks you know at the time mm -hmm. but some guys just kind of go to a place where they're just like that's it i don't i don't want to deal with life you know they just kind of go like unplug and they just kind of like go full-on mig tower they just go like full-on black pill and they're yeah, like i'm just going to stay away from all this it's just not worth it but like how did you find the worth in it like what was because your I don't, why i don't hate women i think women it's fun women are great I, right I, yeah, yeah yeah i don't hate women i don't know why people think this show is about hating women are women. great marriage sucks yeah i would never <laughs> it's get different married, thing I would, I would never go down the divorce so my Okay, my uncle, he'll never watch this, but he, he made ha half a billion dollars working for 50 years, right? Mm -hmm. And he sold his company. His wife took half his money within three years. And it's like, I got a personal testament to this. And it's like, dude, I would never, ever get married. And right now I have five girls I'm dating and one's in the other room. And it's, just, it's, it's, it's easier. They're all cool with it, too. Was there anything that you came across that I had talked about in any of my videos or was like, no, he's full of shit with that one. That one's totally not true. Like, is there anything that didn't um, work? No, but there was a thing with Sean T that I agreed with about spinning plates. Like I, at the time I was like, Sean T was like, oh, I don't like that word. And I was mm -hmm. like, I could see why that would be bad. But then I got over it because now it's in my terminology. But that's okay. it. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, he didn't, he didn't really disagree with um, the notion of, exercising some options he just hated the term like yeah, uh, right and, and i get why he did he's a counselor i get it like whatever <laughs> it's a defining term it you know it is yeah. what it is yeah no, it is. <laughs> it's like saying i hate the sun for being called the sun it's just the sun it's just what it is man yeah the sun and is hot water is moon. wet women are hypergamous and solipsistic end of story oh, go do the work yeah the hypergamy thing that was so cool to watch once i put on the muscle and like the girls because there's the girls that i would see at this gym that when i first got there i was skinny and now they're approaching me at the gym just like hey john how's it going and it's like a complete 180 you know i went in there this little weak guy could at, barely bench the bar at what point did that change for you like was it when uh, you hit 150 ago. pounds when you started to you know started to get the ago. results Three months ago yeah. yeah but i've been i've been picking up women um i i think probably two months after that photo was taken i started practicing spinning plates and they weren't they were five was it awkward for you at, at first because i mean yeah, it sounds yeah, like was, you were really scared. plugged in and, yeah, i was okay. scared man i was scared terrified. of what the scared of them like leaving right because i didn't have too many plates so i was terrified i was like okay i'm gonna i'm gonna maintain some frame here and i was mm -hmm. terrified to send the text but guess what happened she responded with with encouragement like i was like what yep. you know what i mean like it turned her on that i put her down like and i don't mean put her down in a bad way just like i, I softly rejected her and made her want me more so okay so the strategy of exercising some options and dating several women simultaneously in a non-monogamous fashion aka spinning plates ha has been working for you yeah especially today like, do they ever uh, protest or, or push back is there a lot of shit tests amongst I, them do they yeah, ever scrap with each other yeah but I, I i i so two days ago there's the door i had to there's the door to this girl you taught me that mm -hmm. and she walked out and then sent me this long text sorry it'll never happen again right comply or goodbye actually no she's in the next room right now well she's, she's back here. now so she's obviously yeah. complying <laughs> yeah she's complying so what was the I fight over uh, why did no, you have to show was, her the front door she was just complaining something about the dog hair on the couches and i was like well you could clean it and she's like what i was like well that's the rule fine yeah it just escalated it was a dumb escalation like it, it was pointless but what about some of the other concepts you know where um you know where i talk about maintaining frame you know as you're dating women or you get into an ltr like have you found ways to apply that i would never get into an ltr but okay. But I mean, if yeah. you're dating a bunch of these women, like let's yeah, say you're yeah. dating three or four of them simultaneously for six months. I mean, you're basically spinning multiple plates in long-term relationships, right? So okay. there's I, I can always the concept of managing frame, you know, when it comes comes to women. Have you been able to test that and apply that? I mean, like the 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 uh, dog issue was basically a uh, shit test, you know, like yeah, the dog and the hair and that sort of stuff. And yeah. You're like, well, and if you I don't like it, the dog's over there. You know, the door's over yeah, there. The so door's over there. Yeah. She did leave. Yeah. Yeah. Do you find that that's easy for you to do now? Yeah, absolutely. And they love it. They respond to it. They respect it. It's like, 
at first before you find your content you're chasing single mommies like you're so scared that there's going to be no one else out there there's so many there's so many hot women out there there's not a lot of high value men so like men need to level the hell up like asap because there's a lot of attractive women i can find 20 tomorrow so Beautiful women are not a scarce resource out there, guys. It's uh, high value, top shelf guys that can put a dent in the universe, know how to make bank, live in a strong masculine frame, you know, have combat skills. These guys are rare, super yeah. rare. And it's, you know, it's going to be dressed in overalls and look like work when you start to, you know, to begin to do it. But the payoff, as you can see with John himself, because he did it himself. How long did it take you to turn around your life? Like, what was the total time frame from leaving single mommy to today? Year. One year, yeah. In but, one but, year, you did all that. I, but I'm talking, I'm talking 80, 90 hours a week of yeah. Tough well, yeah, because you, yeah, because you it, committed yourself to it, right? There was nothing more important. It was, it, it, I was at the point of suicide when I broke up with her, like mm-hmm. right. And I had two options. It's like, okay, call quits or go play the game with Rich in my ear. And I was like, okay, I got a coach. Imagine me. It's like the Super Bowl, and you're my head coach, Bill Belichick, right? Whatever. Yeah. And you're telling me to make that pass. To uh, what about to- the money part of it? Because I. Because I always get guys, you know, asking me about business and business ideas. So, what uh-huh. about the money part of it? Because you went from a hundred thousand dollar year salary guy. Like, what are you doing now? And no, how much you're earning? If you want to talk own, about that, it was my own company. Okay. Um, yeah, it was my own company called Preferable Pops, and we matched people with people looking for puppies. I love dogs; just my thing. Okay. And it just was an underperforming business. Basically, I I, made, I was able to take a hundred k out each year, but as of three months ago, I started applying really aggressive um, sales skills and basically networking with these high profile dog companies that I can't disclose, but I just signed a $300,000 six month contract. I have one employee, so that's net profit, $300,000 in my pocket for six months worth of work. So, and we're able to satisfy that contract on automation. So it's kind of, feel free to check it out. I mean, uh, my LinkedIn as well is open to the public. I mean, I just can't disclose the partner, but. Can you can you talk a little bit about your um, pivot, like your shift in your business mindset, like like what would like if you could attribute one, two, or three things, let's say, to the success that that you're having now versus where you were at a year ago? What would you say that it is, or uh, you know, the things play, that are playing to win, listening, turning my car into an educational studio, right, mm-hmm. and testosterone? I mean, seriously, there you like, go, guys. I, I, I can't put it any simpler than that. I just, I got off another deal call today mm-hmm. with a big, they're called Pet Plan and they're the biggest pet insurance company and they're so excited to work with me. So it's like just the conversation and deal, deal flow is just dominant and frame. I use frame control in business now oh, yeah. and I get a lot more done. Like it's crazy. You use, and with my family, I've cut off family members due to frame control. So Did it's you like, find that hard to do? No. I hate my family. So like that was the easiest part. Like it, it was harder to cut off women than it was my own family. So why would you cut off family? Like what is it about them where you're like, okay, this is just not acceptable. I'm going to keep them at arm's length. Or is it just like a they're, full ghost? Like you're never talking to them again. They're Mormon. So I'm not a Mormon. Um, their values do not align with my values. It's very hard to have conversations with them. Okay. Yep. Got it. And Got it, it just doesn't make sense. Right. Like to go over for Thanksgiving and what are we going to talk about? I can't, I can't contribute to the table. What like what were the problems? If you don't mind talking a little bit about it, like was it was it like constant lectures about your lifestyle and they wanted yeah, you to yeah, adopt it's, a, it's a, always right. But they were they, my family are all entrepreneurs, so it wasn't that. It was just like you know LDS. They don't believe in multiple partners. Well, they do, but they but as they long as you're married know. to all of them, right? But you know they can't do that anymore, like legally. But there's like a traditionalist. I don't know. LDS are weird, but. Um, no, it's just, it's about values, right? It's like, I drink coffee. You can't drink coffee if you're Mormon. And mm. it's like the, those nitpicking conversations aren't worth my time. Got it. Yeah. No. Got it. So minimizing stress and all of that freed up more of your time for the pursuit of excellence and doing the work then is what you're saying. Like you made some discriminatory choices about what you're doing with your day. Like I can listen to bitches ain't shit, but hoes and tricks on the radio, or I right. can turn on a podcast or an audiobook. I can spend an afternoon with people that are going to lecture me about my lifestyle choices, or I can, you know, go to right? the gym, right? Close another. Day. I did have a question for you though. Yeah. Um, you talk, I, I don't date women with tattoos. Um, mm-hmm. Well, I'll have fun with them. 
I have tattoos and I started getting them removed. What do you think? How does that apply for men though? Do you think as a man, you can have tattoos and then I just don't want to sound like I'm contradicting myself or being a hypocrite. Yeah. I don't think it matters for men because tattoos are traditional, traditionally masculine, um, endeavor. It's, it's, you know, it's always been that way, especially in like, like there's even tribal cultures in yeah, in Tongans and stuff Africa and, and Australia yeah. where they like tattoo their bodies and it's not the women that are getting tatted up. It's the guys that do. So when women do like, it's like, it's the whole, you know, if I can put it this way, it's, it's women trying to be more masculine and mimicking the behaviors of men. Right. Okay. So yeah. get it, getting like sleeve tats, you know, for example, it looks fine on a guy right like i've seen lots right. of guys i have friends with it i've got enough scars already like i don't need any more so i'm just not into it right but um yeah, I, I don't, when I'm not into it. when you see women copying those those behaviors it just tells me that something's offside with the mental firmware um and a lot of the stuff that they're putting on their body is self-mutilation right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i had the, so single mommy she had a tattoo trying to cover up her scars on her stomach i've seen and that it, a few times and she yeah. couldn't even finish it it was a half done like birdcage and it was the yeah. weirdest whenever i felt her stomach it was like goo like it was just the weirdest yeah. and she was the hottest girl at the time that i've ever been with and now i mean i say i can attract I can easily land a seven and an eight when before it was a two and a three or a single mommy. So right. like I'm more happy with a compliant six or seven than a non-compliant nine, 10 or 11. Yeah, a pleasant Any seven day. is always better than a bitchy 10. All Dude, I've had them all. I, I, I paid for them too. So Jimmy's matter. got a question for you here about your gym routine. Uh, so I do push, pull, leg split. That simple. And sometimes I do a cardio for Sundays as my day off, but I'm in the gym seven days a week. If I do anything extra, it's those foo-foo exercises. Like you can hit your deltoids a certain way or, but that's it. I mean, I, I it's just stick to a plan, lift heavy shit, put it down. Like Rich says, you're good to go. Eat and well, it, rest you properly. You got to eat well. Yeah. Cause yeah. I don't, my abs aren't visible because of the bulking process. So when I start cutting, the TRT should help with that, with the muscle was- wasting, I'm sure. And um, I'm looking forward to that, but whatever. You can fast, like, you know, throughout the day, basically. Like, you can have your last meal at 6, 7 o'clock, and then, and then your next meal can be, like, lunchtime, right? Or, oh. like, 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock. And have it as a big meal? Because I I, I'm not done growing. I want to I wanna hit, like... You'll still grow. Pounds. You'll still grow, but it's, but it's just your body will start to burn more fat while you're in the fat fasting okay. phase right i like that. you're not going to lose any muscle like that like that usually tends to happen if you're doing like multiple day fasts like two three four day fasts like oh, that's when it. your body starts to like cannibalize muscle tissue because it's a good source of energy and it, a lot of your that, fat starts to go then too our bodies don't give a shit about us like it's like it could take the fat but it's like nah i'll take the muscle yeah, yeah it's yeah, about I, I hate that, man. <laughs> it's yeah, it's like, about survival is really what your body is. Yeah, like stupid. there's lots of Evo psych books. So recommendation for you, you know, since you're oh, kind wow. of going through all this unplugging sort of phase um, for yourself yep. in the pin top comments of all my videos, I got an Amazon link and yeah, there's, yeah, there's books there that I recommend with Evo psych. Yep. Listen to some of those because you're, because you're really going to fully get your head around what women are and what and what men are and what our places and roles are you know like basically here on the earth yep. so as you're kind of like moving through life now now it's like okay well i've i've seen rich's videos i've read the book i've seen you know you know whoever in the space that i collaborate with um then then you start to understand like the science behind it all right and right. the dynamics between men and women and why you do what you do and why you have those limiting um you know, those barriers that you put up, you kind of draw like a perimeter around yourself and, and, and yeah, keep yeah, it yeah. us versus them sort of strategy. Check some of those out because you're going to like them. Did you recommend The Evolution of Desire? Was Evolution of Desire is a good book, yeah. I, yeah, so you recommend yeah. it. It was fantastic. Yeah. It, oh, I totally recommend that book. I, I would say listen to it twice because there's a lot there. It's very dense. But yeah, what I was trying to, the point I'm trying to get at is like, I think most men watch your videos and then go back home and beat off and play video games. And mm-hmm. if that's who you are, I mean, good for you. Keep watching the content, supporting the channel, but you can totally turn your life around, but it's going to be the hardest year of your life for sure. Cool.